Hey guys and welcome back to another video on the channel. Um, in today's video we're going to be looking at the specialist paper 1 for the 2020 external exam tech free. Um, I'll be doing this probably in two parts because it's a 90 minute exam so I'll do a part 1 and a part 2 of this. So yep 2020 paper Queensland specialist math paper 1 tech free. Okay so this is pretty much where you put your stuff. Um, that's where you answer your multiple choice. Let's get down to the questions. Um, we don't need to read that because we're just going to look at the content pretty much. Okay, so uh, multiple choice has just questions 1 to 10, so it just starts off with question 11. So the vertices of a regular hexagon are positioned on the circumference of a unit circle as shown on the Ar 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 Argan diagram. That's how they're supposed to be pronounced. Um, so straight off the back we can see it's complex numbers because you can read here it's got Z so that means complex so your imaginary component and your real component is here okay um, so we straight away know it's a unit circle as well so we know that this distance is one so if you see the word unit that just means one okay consider the complex number W shown on the plane determine W in your answer in the form R C I S theta so CIS theta is like polar form of shorthand, so it means cos theta plus I sine theta. So it's like, um, actually, instead of using Euler's identity, they use CIS, which is a shorthand they use in school. So this just means cos theta plus I sine theta. Okay, so they want it in like polar form pretty much. Okay, so we can see they've taken the sixth root of this complex number, whatever. It is here so we know this complex number would be just well z equals 1 so what they've done is pretty much they've taken the six root of this one here this is what we can see and it's one of them here now we've got to pretty much divide into separate regions of angles so because there's six solutions that means every single angle leading to one of these solutions must be the same so that means this angle is the same as that angle, etc, etc. So all we got to do is take 360 degrees and divide it by um, 6. So that should give you 60 degrees. Now we're going to put it in radians because that's how they usually like it um, in this syllabus. So 60 degrees in radians, you're going to times it by pi and divide by 180 degrees. And that will turn it into radians, so you should get 2 pi on 3. Okay. Um, R is their distance, but we know this distance is 1 because of the unit circle. So W, this complex number, is going to be 1, 2. So that's going to be... Um, oh, sorry, that's not that. I was reading my working over I written here because I've solved the questions previous before recording the videos. Um, this would be pi on, um, I believe, 3. And we've got 1, 2 of those, so we have times 2. So we have... The angle is 2 pi on 3. Apologies for writing the answer just there. I was just looking at my working. I've just solved it here. Um, so you would write the answer as 1 CIS 2 pi on 3. Okay, Because that's pi on 3 here and that's pi on 3 here. So that would be um, 120 degrees. Um, so yeah, you would write it like that. So that would give you the mark there. Okay, so let's take a look at B. Convert into Cartesian form. So to do this, you need to know that CIS theta means cos theta plus I sine theta. So all we're going to need pretty much now, this is tech free. So you'll need to know um, your special triangle. So your particularly your 60, 30 triangle. So 60 root 3, um, 30, um, what's this, 1 and 2. And you might need to know cast as well. So cast. So that means um, cos is positive in this region, all are positive here, sine is positive here, and tan is positive in here, and this is your quadrants. So, um, so your W is 1 cos of 2 pi on 3 plus I sine 2 pi on 3. Okay. Now 2 pi on 3 is 120 degrees, which is very it's the same as 60 degrees except we're in quadrant two so sine of 60 degrees is going to be the um positive 
will be the same as sine of 120 degrees. Now, I won't be changing the signs because we're in quadrature and sine is positive there. So, sine is 60 degrees, so you go opposite on hypotenuse. So, this term here will be root 3 on 2 with i. Um, cos of 60 degrees is the same as 120, except we're in quadrant 2 now, so you need to chuck a negative sign in front of it. Uh, negative sign here, sorry. So cos of on 120 degrees is negative cos of 60 degrees. So you go go adjacent, so you'll get negative a half here. Okay. So that is W in Cartesian form, uh, negative a half plus square root of three on two i. Okay. Um, if you have any questions about this particular question, leave some in the comments, and I'll try my best to answer it. Okay. So each vertex of the hexagon is a solution to this equation here. Okay, so we've previously actually mentioned that up here when z6 is equal to 1. So straight off the back, we can answer this first question because they haven't said what root this is. And we can see this 6 solution, so n must be 6. Okay, State the value of a. So a is your pretty much your first solution. So we can see the first solution is here. The angle is 0 and it has a radius of 1. So um, the value of a is 1. Okay. Verify W satisfies this equation here. So W is one of the roots of this equation here. So that means if I substitute this Cartesian, so if I substitute W to the 6, it should give me 1. So I can substitute the cut Now I'm going to substitute the polar form and use the, um, I can't pronounce his name, De Morgan's theorem. Because um, you can bring the power here and bring it to the angle as well. So I'll substitute that in there. So 1 CIS of 2 pi on 3 all the power of 6 equals 1. Using, De I cannot pronounce his name, I'm so sorry guys. De Morgan's theorem, you can bring the 1 here, uh, the 6 here. And you can bring the 6 inside there. So 6 times by 2 pi on 3 gives you a 1, or should give you 1. So we can rewrite this, well, six, um, 1 to the power of 6 is 1, so you have 1 cos of, um, this will be 4 pi, plus i sine of 4 pi. So cos of 4 pi, we can use this using the unit circle. We know 2 pi is one revolution, and 4 pi is just another revolution, so the x value will be 1, so that will be 1. And the y value will still be 0. So that will be 0. So you should get 1 equals 1. Okay? And that shows it satisfies it. So you'll get your two marks there. Okay? Um, if you have any questions about this one here, yep, just leave some in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. Righto, let's take a look at question 12. So consider the vertices A, B, and C of the rectangular prism as shown. State the coordinates of A, B, and C. Okay, so what you're going to do straight up, is literally just lists its coordinates. So it doesn't have a z value here. We can read its x value, so it's 1, y value is 3, and doesn't have height, so it's 0. Uh, here, we can see it doesn't have an x value, so it's 0, um, 3, 2. And here, we, can, and we know that 0, 0, so we'll just use that as a point of reference. Um, C, we can see has an x value of 1. It has a height of 2, and it has no y value, so it's 0, 2. Okay, so hopefully you got that for your coordinates. Oh, sorry, I just banged my mic. Um, if you didn't, um, just read the diagram very carefully and just see why this doesn't have a y coordinate, why that doesn't have a z coordinate, and why that doesn't have an x coordinate. Because this is literally their axes here, and the points are directly on them respectively. So you'll write a is 1, 3, 0, um, b is 0, 3, 2. And C, of course, is 1, 0, 2. Okay? Um, okay, so determine the unit vector and hat that is normal to the plane containing these. Okay, so straight off the back, we need to find the vector perpendicular to this particular plane. So, what you're going to do is you're going to draw, draw some little diagram like this where you have the points A, B, and C. Now, to find your equation of your plane, you need to find the cross product of these two vectors here. So it doesn't matter what combination you use, I'm going to use a and b, a to b and a to c, but you could just as right use 
uh, C to B or C to A. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to use these ones because that's what I used in my working here. Um, let's rub that out because that's annoying me. So if we cross these vectors here, it's going to give us our normal vector. Now, it won't give us the unit vector because the unit vector, remember, is a vector with a length of 1. So your n hat will be 1 over the length of n times by n. Okay. So this will just give us our n value. So first of all, we need to work out a to b. So a to b is going to be negative o to a plus o to b. So we'll go negative and we'll have 1, 3, 0 plus 0, 3, 2. So that will give me negative 1, 0, 2. Now I'm going to write this up here because I don't have much room on this page here. So a to b is going to be negative 1, 0, 2. Um, and now we're going to work out a to c really quickly. Okay. So a to c is going to be negative o to a plus o to c. So we're going to have negative 1, 3, 0 plus uh, the coordinate 1, 0, 2. So that will give us 0, negative 3, 2. Okay. So A to C, we'll write that, see if we have enough room here. We can rub that out now because we've already worked out what A to B is. And we might rub out our diagram as well. Uh, actually, no, we'll leave it there. So, A to C, 0, negative 3, 2. Okay? So, all you got to do is pretty much cross them together now. Now, it doesn't really matter which way you cross them because if you crossed A to, with B, it'll give you that one, or if you cross it the other way, it'll just give you the same vector in the opposite direction. Okay? Um, so, if you get a negative one, it doesn't really matter. Um, they take that into account because the the normal vector is just a vector perpendicular to the plane, doesn't matter what direction it's in pretty much, as long as it's perpendicular. So we're going to do A to C cross with A to B. So you make your 3 by 3 matrix now, so I, J, K. Put in your top coordinates, so 0, negative 3, 2, negative 1, 0, 2. So my, my top one is my A to C vector, and my bottom one is my A to B vector. So now I'm going to rub this out because I need the room badly. <sighs> so when doing this, you've got to break it up into its matrix forms. So the x values, now you've got to go plus, minus, plus. So the first one will be this matrix here, the x components, negative 3, 2, 0, 2, i, minus the y one, so it will be 0, 2, negative 1, 2, j, plus the um, z1, so 0, 2, negative 1, 2, k, okay? So, um, recall if you want to find the determinant, you multiply these two numbers together and you subtract the product of these two numbers. So, what that's going to be is for the um, x component, you're going to have negative 3 times 2 minus 2 times 0, with um, the i there, so you're going to get an answer of negative 6i, so that's that component there, so I'll replace that now with just negative 6i. So, minus 6i. And then you're going to work out this second component here, so you're going to have negative brackets 0 times by 2 minus 2 times by negative 1 with our j there. So you're going to get 0 here, and then you're going to get positive 2 there, but it's getting multiplied by negative again. So you're going to get um, negative 2j there. Okay? Alright, so rub that out now. And then you're going to multiply 0 times 2 minus negative 1 times 2 brackets, and then that's going to be 0, and that's going to be negative 2, so you'll have minus 2k, okay? 
So when doing the cross product, we can see we've got a full negative vector. So if you wanted to, you can make that positive just to make it easier. So you can rewrite this as your normal vector is just 6, 2, and 2. All I did was divide by negative 1 because I assume this one gave me this vector, the upside down one. But I just wanted the positive one just to make things easier. Okay. So what we can do now is we're not done our question yet because you notice that asks for the unit vector. So if you were to put this down, you'd probably get 2 out of 3 marks. But you wouldn't get the third mark because you haven't found your unit vector. So we need this vector divided by its length. So the length of this vector, we're going to use Pythagoras theorem. So square root of all the components added together all squared. So you can see my 6 is squared, my 2 is squared, and that's all under a square root. So what you're going to have is the square root of 36 plus 4 plus 4. So you're going to have um, 38, not 38, um, square root of 44. And the square root of 44 is going to be, um, actually, have we done that right? Let me just think about it. Um, Yeah, that's all good. Pretty sure. Just checking my vectors are all good. That's weird. Okay. Um, that component. Just checking the Y components there. Okay. So the Y, I just realized the Y component's wrong. I may have wrote it down wrong there. So. The reason why is because I did the I do the problems before I make the videos and I've just realized one of our components is wrong so this shouldn't be negative 2 because if we do that matrix again we're gonna have 0 negative 3 negative 1 0 multiply those two numbers what you're gonna get is 3 uh, 0 minus 3 so this should be a negative 3k my mistake there um, negative 3k so now if we actually find our length again because the reason why I knew it was wrong is because we've got the square root of something that wouldn't be like simplified that easily which you can get normally but I solved this question prior so I knew something was up so now we've got to find the length of this guy here so our normal vector is 6 2 3 so the length of that will be the square root of 6 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared so we're going to have square root of 36 plus 4 plus 9 so you're going to get square root of 49 which is 7 okay so our unit vector I'll write here because I'm lazy n hat will be 1 on 7 times our vector and that is the correct answer for question b if you have any questions about this one um the only thing I got wrong initially was just calculating this bit with a determinant. Um, but yeah, um, if you have any other questions regarding this one here, just leave some in the comments and I'll try my best to answer it. Because that is that is all correct now. Okay. Right. Um, oh, there's more working down there. Oh, I could have used that. Okay. So, verify n hat is perpendicular to AB. So, uh, the vector AB I calculated up here. So, I'll rewrite that. So, A to B is negative 1, 0, 2, and n hat we worked out was 1 on 7 of 6, 2, 3. So if you want to check if two, if two vectors are perpendicular, that means their dot product must be 0. So if we dot them together, so if perpendicular, so I'll draw a symbol there, n hat dotted with a b will be zero so what we can do that is we dot them together so we'll go negative one zero two dotted with six on seven two on seven oh there's not enough room there i might just write it up here in this working here so a b dotted with n hat will be negative one zero two dotted with 6 on 7, 2 on 7, and 3 on 7. 
So when you dot them, you multiply their components. So you'll have negative 6 on 7 plus 0 plus 6 on 7. And we can see that cancels that, so you get a dot product of 0. So you put that working here. I'm just going to write it there because there's not much room here with the pen. Okay, so determine the, equa the Cartesian equation of the plane containing A, B, and C. So we already know what our normal vector is containing A, B, and C. Our normal vector was um, 6, 2, 3. So now our unit vector, now our normal, just understand normal vector. And all we need is pretty much to choose one of these points, A, B, and C, because the equation of a plane is R dotted with N and A dotted, is equal to A dotted with N. Um, R is this vector here, X, Y, and Z. So when you dot it with this here, you're going to get 6X plus 2Y plus um, 3Z. This is just any point on the plane. So I'm going to choose the coordinate, I'll just say B. So what was the coordinate B again? Um, 0, uh, 3, and 2. I believe that's it. Yeah, just double checking. Okay, so um, dotted them together, so you'll have X, Y, Z dotted with 6, 2, 3 is equal to 0, 3, 2 dotted with 6, 2, 3. So you're going to have 6x plus 2y plus 3z. Here you're going to have 0 plus 6 plus 6. So our equation is going to be 6x plus 2y plus 3z is equal to 12. And that is the Cartesian um, equation of the plane containing a, b, and c. Okay. Um, if you have any questions about this stuff here, leave some in the comments and I'll try my best to answer it. All right, moving on to question 13. So, in specialists, you study a particular model of some probability density functions. With this particular model here, if you have this setup here, so let's say it's from negative infinity to infinity, of pretty much um, lambda e to the negative lambda x, um, I know the expected value is straight up is going to be 1 on lambda. Um, but you can also work out the expected value by taking your probability density function and multiplying by x and then integrating between the bounds, which is what they've got here in this question. But here, they just want you to work out the expected value using integration by parts. So I will be expecting 1 over lambda to pop up somewhere. If not, we've probably made a mistake somewhere. So straight off the back, let's write our integral out. So the integral from 0 to infinity of x lambda e to the negative lambda x dx. So for integration by parts, recall the formula is this, u v dash is equal to u v minus um, v u dash. So you want to pick a function that disintegrates as your u, and you want to pick a function, the other function to be v. So all of these two functions here, my x is going to be equal to my u pretty much. So I'll just choose this as my u, so of u is lambda x, and my v dash is e to negative lambda x, okay? So that means u dash will be lambda, and v will be negative 1 on lambda e to negative lambda x. So uh, the Euler stays the same, but you have to divide by the differential of this, which be negative lambda. So rewriting this into the formula, and you've got to include your bounds as well. So I have square brackets, uv, so that's going to be um, lambda x multiplied by negative 1 on lambda e to negative lambda x with 0 and infinity minus the integral from 0 to infinity of um, v, which is negative 1 on lambda e to negative lambda x multiplied by u dash, which is lambda dx. Okay. So straight at the back, we can cancel that lambda and that lambda. So we can rewrite this whole thing as just negative x um, over e to the lambda x between 0 and infinity. We can take out the negative sign here so we can have plus, and we can cancel those lambdas too. So we'll have the integral from 0 to infinity is equal to e to the negative lambda x dx. Okay? So this is still equal to our, expert, our expected value, but we'll leave that out for now, just for working purposes. Now, let's try and evaluate this thing here. If I substitute in 0, well, let's substitute the stuff in. So I have negative infinity 
on e to the pretty much infinity down here as well, minus 0, plus this integral here. Now you'll notice you have pretty much an infinity over an infinity. However, this here is going to dominate because it's an exponential term and this is just a linear term. So rather than going to infinity, it's going to approach 0 faster. So you can pretty much cancel this term out. Um, and this term is just fully gone because it's 0. So all you're left with is pretty much this integral here. So 0 to infinity of e to negative lambda x dx. And that's quite easy to integrate. That's just... Um, um, e to negative lambda x on negative lambda with 0 and infinity and hopefully there's more working down here. Oh no there isn't. Okay so we're going to write our working here. We're going to substitute infinity first. So we'll have e to the negative infinity lambda on negative lambda minus e to the negative 0 lambda on lambda uh, and there's a negative here. Um, that term is a negative exponent, so you can think of it being down here, and that's going to approach 0 as it goes to infinity. Uh, multiply the negative, so you're going to have plus e to the 0 on lambda, so you're going to get 1 over lambda, because e to the 0 is 1, so your expected value is 1 over lambda, as previously predicted. Okay, um, if you have any questions about this one here, now this probably isn't the best way to do it. I'm kind of all over the place. My working's gone like kind of like this. Um, I would write this neater, but the reason why I didn't is because this pen is really thick and I can't write as small as I used to, like on paper. But yeah, if you have any questions about this one here, uh, just leave some in the comments and I'll try my best to answer it. Right, let's take a look at question 14. Okay, so question 14 I can see straight off is motion so what you want to do is refer to your specialist formula C so the straight off I'm going to be looking at so hopefully you can see my screen here so this is the specialist formula that so you get given the exam go straight to motion so what I mean by that is go straight to just this section down here and look at acceleration because it's going to help you with this particular question so the motion of an object um, moves in a straight line is given by this equation here so v is your velocity because it's meters per second and they've already specified it there and x is your displacement from the origin so determine acceleration in terms of position so that's important so previously we discussed that acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time so a lot of people would just try and integrate that straight away but notice this is not time it is position so we need to go here and refer to our formula sheet and go, all right, that's true, that's true. But take a look at this. This one's got dx in it. So acceleration is your velocity times dv dx. So we're going to use this one rather than this one here. Okay. So write that to the side somewhere um, really quickly. Um, just probably in the top corner and use that. So v dv on dx. So if you want to find your acceleration in terms of x, you need to multiply this equation by the derivative of this equation here. So, hence we've got v of x is this. We need to differentiate this with respect to x. So, I'm going to use chain rule. So, I'm going to let u equal 2x. So, therefore, u dash is 2. And if you're differentiating this here, this is, if you're differentiating that with respect to u, that is just going to be negative u dash on uh, square root of 1 minus u squared. So u dash is 2, so you're going to have, um, I've run out of room there, so I'll write it up here. So negative 2, which is my u dash, 1 over the square, uh, root of minus u squared. Now u I defined was 2x, so you have 2x or squared. And that will be your derivative, so I will rub that out now because I don't need that anymore. So all I do is chain rule on this. So rub that out so I have enough room. So what you're going to have is negative 2 on the square root of 1 minus 4x squared. So that is your v dash of x. So your acceleration is going to be this equation multiplied by this equation here. So acceleration of x will be negative 2 cos inverse of 2x 
on the square root of 1 minus 4x squared. Okay? So that is the correct answer this one, and you'll get your two marks. I uh, mind you, show the working I just rubbed out here, I just didn't have enough room. Okay? Right, I use your result from 14 to determine a of 0. So the acceleration when x, your position is 0. So all you got to do is sub that into your equation. So you have negative 2 cos inverse um, 2 times 0 is 0. So just leave as 0 on the square root of 1 minus 4. 0 squared, so you just pretty much have negative 2 cos inverse of 0. So, cos inverse of 0, that's all the solutions to cos. So, if we look at the cos curve really quickly, the first solution is pi on 2. So, that means we have negative 2 times pi on 2. So, our answer a of 0 is going to be negative pi uh, meters per second squared. Okay? So that is the correct answer to this one, and you'll get your two marks. All right. Uh, let's take a look at the next question here. Okay. So um, if you have any questions about this one, leave some in the comments, and I'll try my best to answer them. Righto. Question 15. So the points O, A, and C represent in three-dimensional space diagram as shown there. So O, A, B, C form a parallelogram in three-dimensional space. Determine the coordinates of B. Okay, so the coordinates of B, um, you can work out very easily. So, O to A is the same as C to B. So that means the coordinates B is the same as O to C plus O to um, A. Because this vector is parallel to this vector here, and they're exactly the same. So, straight off the back, we can write O to B is O to C plus O to A. So O to B is, um, what was C again? 3, 1, 2, plus negative 6, 2, negative 2. So what that going to be equal to, that's going to be uh, negative 3, 3, and 0. Okay, And that'll give you your one mark. So you could label that if you really wanted to, but yeah. Right, let's take a look at the second part. So, M is the midpoint of BC. So, we can see where that is. That's halfway. So, that means that there is halfway. Um, okay. Determine the position vector O to M. So, we want to work out this vector here. So, to get to M, so O to M, we need to go to C and then halfway B to C. Okay. So, um... O to M is O to C plus a half of um, C to B. Okay, so this is how you can work it out. So you'll go O to M is now we worked out um, what C is. Where is it? Oh, what well, we've got given C three one two plus a half. Now C to B is negative O to C plus O to B. So we need our previous answer in this one here. So we'll have negative 3, 1, 2 plus negative 3, 3, 0. So we're going to have negative 6, um, 2 and negative 2 as C to B. Okay. I'm um, going to halve that really quickly. So you'll get negative 3, 1, negative 1. So you go plus negative 3, 1, negative 1. So what we're going to have here is 0, 2, 1 as your vector O to M. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. This here is just half of that vector there because we need it in this term here. And that will give you one mark. So this O to M is 0, 2, 1. Okay, um, if you have any questions about this one here, leave some in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. Okay, all right, so. Uh, we'll probably need this diagram again for this second part, uh, third part, sorry. So n divides am into the ratio 2 to 1. Okay, so that's important. So let's work at geometrically where that is. So a to m, where's that? Okay, so that means this section here is twice as big as this section there. So that means a to n is... 2 on 3 of a to m hopefully that makes sense 
because this section is twice as big as that section. So it's two thirds. This is two thirds and that's a third of A to M. Okay. So um, determine the vector O to N. Okay. So O to N is going to be the vector. You go go O to N. So we won't get two there. We have to go up to A and then two thirds of A to M. So it's going to be O to A plus two thirds of A to M. Now we can work out A to M because we know what O to M is. So A to M is negative O to A plus O to M. So substituting that in, we have negative and what was coordinate A? Uh, negative six, two, and negative two plus O to M, which we just worked out. Now you notice you need the previous answer in a lot of these questions. Now the best way to get through them when this marking criteria is, let's say you didn't know what this was, make something up here and use it down here and you'll get follow through error pretty much in this particular syllabus. In math, I wouldn't recommend that, but um, in this particular syllabus, you can do that. Um, so you'll have six plus zero, um, zero, and three okay so you get six zero three as a to m okay and hopefully you can see where i got that from so you can have uh, the vector negative six two negative three plus two on three of six zero three so if i apply that i'm going to have negative six two negative two plus 2 on 3 times by 6 is going to be 4, 0, 2. So you're going to get, or should get, negative 2, 2, 0 as your final vector. Um, just double checking that. Yep, I think that's all good. If not, I'll probably go back and check it after the video. Um, but if that's all good, then that's all good there. Okay. Um, yep, yeah, right, I'm confident with that. Um, okay. Use the vector method to show O, B, and N are on a straight line. So, O, B, and N. So, we want to show that is a straight line. So, the way you can do that is pretty much, all right, if that's on a straight line, that means the vector O to N is some multiple of the vector um, O to B. So lambda O to B. Because if they're on a straight line, that means this must be a multiple of that and vice versa. So you can go O to N is some multiple of O to B. Okay. Now we know what O to N is because we really worked it out there. So you have negative 2, 2, 0, plus, oh, is equal to lambda, and we have negative 3, 3, 0, which is my point B, which we worked out from the very start up here. So, is there some value of lambda that makes this true? Well, how do I turn, if I can turn negative 3 into 2, negative 3, and you want to turn that into negative 2, you multiply by 2 on 3. Um, so I'll give it negative 2, and that will work the same down here. And since the last one is 0, that works as well. So lambda, in this case, would be 2 on 3. So, um, yeah, that proves they're in a straight line because 1 is a multiple of the other. Um, and you define it there. Right, um, and that will give you two marks there. Okay, um, I'll do part. I'll do this in part two now. Um, that's the first bit of 2020 external exam paper one tech free done. If you have any questions at all, just leave some in the comments, and I'll do the rest of the paper very shortly. Okay, uh, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe.